This week's episode is brought to you by the Watasco and Arts and Music Festival Committee, Delcon Visual Arts, and Warren's Music. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor of the Watasco and Walk cast, here's how. Go to our website at Delcon Visual Arts forward slash Wonkcast and send us a message there. Or you can find us on Facebook at Watasco and Wonkcast and you can send us a message there too. We look forward to hearing from you. Welcome back to Wonkcast, episode six, joined in studio today by Jeff Riley Stevenson and Matthew James Irvin from Fifths and Vegas. How are you guys doing today? Good. Doing good. Really good. Great. Thanks for having us. Great to have you in studio today. Um, we're just gonna gonna chat with you about some uh, about some music and and uh, and how you got started and everything. And if you aren't familiar with Fifth and Vegas, they uh, uh, are from Millet actually, um, and uh, have been around for quite a while and are just making a comeback now. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, a few years ago we were. Years ago, we were based out of Edmonton, and we did kind of the Edmonton circuit, and um, uh, just kind of, you know, we took a brief hiatus, but um, just, I guess you could say, for the cause, the benefit concert coming up this summer, we uh, kind of sought out coming back together. Unfortunately, not everyone, I'm the only remaining old member, so I had to go out and find myself a new band, and um, luckily it happened. It was pretty easy. Most uh, most of the guys were pretty eager to play, and 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 get on board with with kind of what we're doing here so it wasn't too hard so we should be good to go it's all new members and now it's fourth in vegas pretty much yeah yeah, yeah. One for them. i'm the only original guy yeah but no it's been uh it's it's taken off pretty quick for us specifically i mean jamming alone is pretty easy thing right now and that's usually a good sign so that's great, especially when you can make chemistry with uh, with new people and, and make it feel like your old band. Has it kind of have you had that opportunity where it's where you get together with a bunch of new guys and, and you can kind of feel like it's it's the old group of guys together, or is it do you know it's different, but at the same time you still get uh, reflections from the past? Uh, to be honest, um, we just got together for the first time to to run through our first practice just within the last week or two here and. Yeah, I mean, going in, I think both Matt and myself were, you know, just kind of went in with that, trying to be open-minded, saying, you know, not uh, not to expect anything, I guess you could say. And it really was, for me, it was kind of like, uh, it definitely felt like it was it was a past band coming back together. I mean, it was pretty seamless. Everyone got together well, and luckily we've all got the, the same, I think, focus on, on where to take the music anyway. So it's going good right now. So, yeah. so are you keeping with the old direction of the band or are you going in kind of a new direction music wise? Uh, <laughs> because everybody has different talents, obviously, yeah. when they into things. So. Yeah, to be honest with you, um, I, I think the whole appeal to Fifth and Vegas myself and I think to, you know, some of our followers from the past, the whole appeal really was we didn't really have a general sense of self-direction. We just kind of... Whatever worked, worked, worked. Yeah, we just kind of threw together what we threw together um, and while maintaining, a, you know, our own standards. And it worked. I mean, we didn't want to go into anything and, and kind of segregate ourselves to a specific genre or um, any sort of, of practice habits. We didn't want it to become militarized. Um, which, you know, a lot of us had experienced before. We just, we just wanted to write and play music. And I think that's the same approach we're taking right now. And it seems to be working with the new guys. That's fantastic. And uh, one of the things I wanted to ask uh, was definitely the name. I mean, Fifth and Vegas, it's a pretty unique name. <laughs> Is there a, like a really remarkable kind of story that you're uh, willing to tell for how you came up with that name? Or is that something that you just kind of want to leave in the... What happens in uh, Vegas uh, is? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's even in the past. For so. sure. I mean, I've been asked that question, and I, I hate to say it because I'm... Or I hate to be the guy hogging the mic right now, but you guys all the questions at me that I guess I can only answer. But no, it's, I'll definitely tell the story. It's, it's, it's so not a, a book-worthy story by any means. Really, when... Um, I got together with the old group for the first practice. Um, you know, we had we had it made up in our heads that we were going to be winning awards within days, so we had to come up with a quote unquote cool name. And uh, 
really after a couple of cold ones, that's what we settled on on each alpha off of a list of about 30 names. It is so unappealing as a story, but that's the way. So it wasn't like one of those think tank things where you're no. like, or everyone's pulling out their hair and there's a hundred no. names scratched out on there. You know, I, I really wish there was a, a you know, the story entailed a stripper named Vegas and, <laughs> and you know, a fishing boat off the coast of Newfoundland, but it, it just, it, that's not the way it is. You could just make the story up and turn I, it into yeah, a song. I might right? have to. You know, the older we get, the more those stories If I ever want to open a fish and chips restaurant in Vegas, I mean, <laughs> fish in Vegas, so <laughs> That's pretty good. So, Matthew, uh, you're you're fairly new to the band. Brand new, you bet. Brand new to the band. Um, so, how did you kind of uh, get jumped into this? Did you know Jeff from from before, or were you kind of just? Yeah, we knew each other in high school. Oh, okay. So, uh, he's been uh, he's been like, bugging isn't the right word, but he's been <laughs> keeping in touch over the last few years to get me to do something. Pleasantly like, reminding. Yeah, yes. exactly. we like to use around here. And uh, yeah, he moved up to Millet a few years ago, so you know, it wasn't the easiest thing to put two and two together. So. Finally, it was, uh, we'll have to go through it, but I, I, I kind of want to know the timeline of how this all got started, because this whole thing, as far as I'm concerned, got started on a phone call yeah. between you and I, Yeah. but uh, you don't know the timeline better than me, so <laughs> I'm interested to hear it. Well, it was one of those things, after a couple of beers, you're like, let's start a band. Well, not for me. Uh, I don't actually drink anymore, but... Uh, yeah, it was just Jeff and I, we, for years we've said we are going to play music together, and it just never came about until this came up, and it was a mutual thing, and it was like, yeah, what the hell, let's let's do this. So. That's a great story when you both kind of collaborate on the same kind of decision. and uh, Yeah, and it was the cause, I think, that kind of almost... And was, okay, so here you go. Was <laughs> it that phone call? Is that when you decided we were going to do this, or yeah, was I it before that? I... No, I, I think the cause surfaced before I got in touch with you, but I don't even think I gave you the option to quote unquote think about it. I just said, not really. Yeah, yeah. you're playing for me. No, yeah. <laughs> so, so speaking of the cause, you want to elaborate on what this cause is? Yeah. Um, I mean, Matt can touch on it as well. Um, with myself, it stems, uh, it stems from um, having a personal battle with depression, um, severe anxiety from the time I was, you know, a young athlete at the age of 14 all the way up until well, right now as a, as a guy in my early 30s with two young kids. Um, and it's been an ugly, dark part of my life. And, um, you know, I don't think it's going to be a case where I'm going to have the opportunity to take a, a serious run at music going forward. And, um, you know, I think this is going to be kind of one outstanding way to um, get involved in possibly raising some money um, for the Edmonton Mental Health uh, and Awareness Committee. Um, and they, you know, have a lot of valuable resources that uh, they're putting forth our way. So long and short of it is, uh, we're doing a benefit concert. Um, and, you know, the organizer now, Braden Sinclair Smith was kind enough to ask us to be one of three headliners. So the whole focus of it is to raise money and raise awareness for suicide and depression. Uh, still to this day, a taboo topic. Um, with Bell, it's talk day. It's really starting to um, catapult it to the mainstream media now. But uh, still, it's still a taboo topic, especially for, uh, for adults, I find, past that age of 30. So I think this would be a great way to bring everyone together and, and um, God, the messages even I've gotten on with you, but on Facebook I've gotten from people that I've known for the years and just, you, you never guess, right? So, it seems to be being accepted well right now. It is. It, it's, 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 you know, social media definitely helps bring it to the forefront, um, which, you know, before the internet, you never really heard about Right, or, yeah. Or at least not very much about it, but, uh, one of our previous drummers, he's uh, involved in this as well. He's with a band called Form 10 on Edmonton. Yeah. And if you know what Form 10 yeah. is. Yeah. Um, Shout out to Chris. Yeah, and he, uh, he he suffered, but, you know, he's a strong individual, and, and he'll work his way through it, and he has. He's yeah. gone through a lot like yourself. And, uh, you know, if there's any way that Justin and I can get involved to help out, which we're doing, we're trying to do today, I should say, not we're doing, but we're trying to do it. Yeah. Let us know. I mean, not just you. I mean, anybody that's listening. If, if we can help, we'll do it. 
Yeah. That's that's outstanding to hear, and, and frankly, that's kind of been the common theme. It's been it's been pretty awesome just since we, everyone's kind of got the the ball rolling here. Um, again, the the event organizer is Braden Sinclair Smith. He's got all of his contact info on our Facebook pages. Um, and he's looking for volunteers, he's looking for working staff, he's looking for everything. Um, he's, he definitely needs help. So. Cool. Uh, and you mentioned your Facebook pages. Can you, can you give everybody your address to the Facebook page? Yeah, you can just simply search on Facebook, uh, Let's Fight Suicide and Depression Benefit Concert. Uh, the full event page is up there, band bios, uh, you know, opening times, all that good stuff. It's all on there. Cool. And take Highway 2A. <laughs> yeah, 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 right right right. yeah, yeah, exactly. So let's talk a little bit about this this concert here before we get into uh, into anything else. Um, it's happening August 18th uh, in Millet at the Millet Agriplex. Uh, so Revolution, Revolution Engine, Politic Live, of course, Fifth in Vegas. Uh, and a lot, a lot of great artists are going to be there. Um, tell us a little bit of kind of about this um, about this concert and. Uh, Kind of how you how you got the idea that you wanted to to raise money for for such a great cause. Of course, it's in cooperation with uh, EMAC, which is what you said, the, the Mental Health uh, Association yeah. of, of Canada, I believe it is. And uh, yeah, so just kind of um, maybe just let us know if you wanted to talk about how how you kind of got the idea for this because it's a great. Yeah. Great idea, and um, it's really going to benefit a lot of people, um, especially with the Millet Agri- Agriplex being um, having the capacity that they have. I think this is uh, it's going to draw a lot of people out for because everybody knows somebody who is either um, a family member or a close friend or you know even a spouse that has uh, gone through something uh, related to mental health. And one of the things that surprised me was, um, like you said about Bell Talk Day, was uh, seeing all these different musicians and right. celebrities and everything that yeah. have that have had personal battles with yeah. this kind of thing and nobody would would ever know because you see them on tv or you see them in um in music and everybody thinks they're just living this glamorous kind right. of yeah. kind of thing but they don't see kind of what's what's in the past and yeah. kind of you know how they um how they got into it uh which is which to me is uh was surprising at first but i began to understand it through through kind of the music, and um, I think everybody's had a personal battle too um, with themselves. Uh, yes, yeah, through one way or another, and, so. and that's just it. And I, I think um, you know, as I said, it, you know, I, the vision that I had a, a vision to, you know, what what can I possibly do to, you know, add to the cause of this not being a taboo subject anymore. Um, I'm not a wealthy man. I can't stroke a check for fifty hundred thousand um, dollars. So you know what? What can I do? Um, and this kind of was m- m- my idea for what we can possibly give back to um, what is still again a taboo topic. Uh, I know a big hole in my life over the past three four years um, that has been a contributing factor to my own depression has been the lack of music for a lot of years there uh you know the the writing process and frankly the performing process was was a big release for myself and it it, it kept me level i i think unknowingly and uh you know it it was a great way to kind of combine um a topic i'm passionate about um uh, music which i'm passionate about and bringing the community together and and doing something that's going to hopefully make a real and honest difference. And I think it will. Um, just hearing the outpouring support that we've had from not only the artists performing at the uh, at the event, but but just people who want tickets and who just people who who want to attend. Um, has that kind of met your? I don't want to say met your demand, but met your kind of uh, goal as to what you you wanted to kind of put out there to people. You want to talk well or what? Yeah, I think uh, it was just interesting to to watch it the first two days. Because like I said, Jeff and I had a conversation on Sunday. And I think it was Sunday night or Monday night. He dropped the whole Facebook post. And I was like, oh, okay, so yeah, this is this is going ahead, okay? <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was just amazing. Like Within two, three days, like yeah. 200, 350 people who had 
you know, said, yeah, interested or, you know, guaranteed coming. And it was like, wow, yeah. okay. It's, it's a topic people want to talk about. And, uh, and just the event too. It's, it's going to be a good event. All the bands are personal friends of one of ours or somebody we know, or, you know, it's, we're all connected. So it's, it's something that everybody wanted to get in on, wanted to be a part of. And for better or for worse, we're just throwing it out there. It is what it is. And working our hardest to yeah, and you're I mean you're talking to two guys that you know kind of lived and breathed in the local Edmonton scene for a long time and and we we all we both know and recognize you know I, I remember doing shows that um, you know you'd be looking on these Facebook event pages and you've got like 60 70 people committed to coming and that was a success in the local scene right um, but as Matt said, in, in a matter of like 48 hours, this the response was just incredible. I mean, we were talking and shares going all the way down to Calgary and Fort McMurray and Vancouver. Um, there was people contacting Braden, um, the event organizer from uh, radio stations, from uh, uh, ce local celebrities. And it is just, it is so neat. The, the reception was just so cool. And again, I think that kind of struck a chord because I do think we all understand that it is so taboo and it's just it's not necessarily scary but there's a blatant refusal to talk talk about the topic so well I mean let's face it Alberta right now is not the easiest place to live yeah so the, you know Jeff and I you know obviously we're not alone here you know there's yeah. been many many stories you know lately and you know what just figured screw it we're going to do something about it and like I said, I didn't even know it was happening until really the Facebook <laughs> post, and the, you know that was only like four yeah. weeks ago or whatever. So yeah, here we it, go. It so was you were kind of like ball and told you're gonna do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, like you really yeah. didn't leave him any choice yeah. for anything. Yeah. He threw up a question. It was like, well, would you want to play for this? And I didn't even want to play guitar. Uh, no, he wanted to play bass for yeah, me. I wanted right? something easy. It's been <laughs> a lot of years. Easy so. for all you bass players. Though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah I'll get That'll call you ruckus on Facebook yeah. for sure. Easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There yes. You go. Same. Sorry. I'm, uh, but no, that, that's accurate. I, he originally was arm wrestling me into playing bass and just with, you know, I... Just so we're all clear in this room, so it doesn't sound like I have a boy crush on the kid here. Yeah, uh, I do myself hold Matt here in very high regard as a professional musician. So when he said I've been bugging him for in a nice way for years to come and collaborate, he's he's being honest because he is uh, he's one of the guys I've looked up to. As weird as that sounds. <laughs> throughout my music career, so maybe that's you guys. You guys all like seeing him on guitar. He's oh, pretty that's very cool because you don't you don't really hear that a lot. Yeah, no. For one of my good friends, and and you know, friends that I've been friends with since we were kids, it is it it's very humbling and neat to uh, you know <laughs> to uh, have my buddy, you know, kind of be one of my I guess music influences. Hey, how's that effect on you? I just met him and I want to have a barbecue with him already. So, so. <laughs> wow, hey. I'd say a beer, but I don't drink anymore. Yeah, that's right. So we do have some tickets to give away for this, of course. I got one pair of tickets here that uh, Jeff and Matthew has uh, very graciously donated for us. Uh, so if you want these tickets, just comment on uh, on the Facebook post uh, when you hear this podcast, and uh, the tickets are yours. So it goes uh, uh, August 18th at the uh, Millet Agriplex, and it um, goes from 4 p.m., and there's a lot of, a lot of great musicians a lot of great different kind of artists three headliners so so if you want uh, if you want some more information you can email let's fight suicide and depression at gmail.com so that's let's fight suicide and depression at gmail.com uh, for any inquiries if you want to get a group of people together and get tickets that would be fantastic as well i will uh, can i add in there something absolutely uh just that uh, proceeds from ticket sales are being donated directly back to charity at the end of the evening. So now we're just going to talk a little bit about your band. Um, just kind of, if you can give us a kind of a rundown, just tell us tell us about yourselves, kind of how you how you kind of started and uh, and everything like that. Kind of, um, yeah, just let everybody kind of know who's uh, who's not familiar, who might not be familiar with you, um, that are new to this podcast and, uh, and that are listening to this podcast. Of course, we're joined by Fifth in Vegas. Uh, and if you're just joining us, um, let them uh, introduce themselves. Yeah, my, my name's Jeff Riley. Um, 
I'm on lead vocals with with the band. Uh, I guess uh, a little bit of a little bit of guitar, but um, yeah, I was I was I guess you'd say one of the founding members of of the band itself. So way back in uh, 2009, dating myself here, I believe it was. Um, my uh, my tenure basically has been strictly with Fifth and Vegas. Matt, Matt's got a little bit more of a magical history. But uh, yeah, no, I've been I've been singing the band. Uh, I've been fronting the band since since day one. Um, definitely one of the key songwriters from when we started out. Um, thankfully, I don't have to tackle the songwriting right now. But my musical influences again, I think it goes back to the concert uh, Chester Bank. Chester from uh, Lincoln from Park, Lincoln Park was one Bennington. of my was one of my main Rest guys. Uh, Elvis Presley. Um, I'm a I'm a kind of a sucker for the older tunes, but so that's uh, what you're saying. But the whole mix up thing is like yeah. you know inspired by Lincoln Park by Elvis yeah. Presley. Yeah, that's kind of a big a oh, big leap. Yeah, I, and, and again, that's that's why I think from the get go, you know, um, us guys in the group, we decided we weren't gonna really again pigeonhole ourselves into a specific genre because you know one day we're writing a, a cheesy ballad and the next day we're writing a political statement song right. so you know it, it can change any given day because you gotta have something to please everybody so. well yeah, heck at this show we're gonna be pulling out a, a hip-hop rock and fuse song so yeah we just uh, we wanted a little something from every corner of alberta right. yeah so that's why you know there's there's gonna be you know, um, Revolution Engine, they're, they're a pretty heavy band. You're Rage Against the Machine-ish kind of stuff. I would never pigeonhole them there, but uh, I, I know them personally, so I can speak on their behalf as far as what their music's going to be like. So, yeah, it would be... Uh, kick-ass. Oh, yeah, they're phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal guys, phenomenal band, and uh, they will put on an amazing show. No doubt about it, so... Yeah. Great way to end the night, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. So do you guys mostly play uh, covers or originals? Because I know watching uh, a lot of bands, you kind of see you get your cover bands, and then you get your guys who are, you know, uh, strictly like just do originals and might have maybe one cover or might throw a medley in. Yeah. What's your kind of uh, formula? Because you said you mix it up, so I yeah. imagine you put in you put in some covers, kind of some influences. Yeah, I, I mean, typically in, in concerts past, I mean, we were 100% original, maybe the odd cover thrown in there just to fill out a set but i mean we're we're an original rock band i think for for this concert we're gonna pull out some fifth and vegas material but we're gonna do a couple few cover songs just to keep it interesting i mean we've got a full hour set time and we're not there to get a record deal and we're not there to get exposure for ourselves we're just there to have show everyone a good time to so. have a good time and to to raise some some funds for a great that's college. right yeah yeah that's great. So uh, let's get into uh, into songwriting a little bit. Um, do you co-write with the band, or do you have kind of one or two people that are mostly um, the sole songwriters um, behind everything? I guess we're going to have to write something. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, the new group just got together, so I mean, we haven't even crossed that songwriting Oh, so it's yet. like new car smell right now. Pretty much, yeah. 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 We, we had we're one deep. practice where it was like, okay learn five or six you know yeah just, we gotta learn we gotta learn the fifth you're still at the point where you get along one. as a band no. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah exactly no, we're, we, yeah. Don't, we don't even know each other as a band except my yeah. brother is playing bass but it's so. yeah, just kind of excuse me yeah, I'm kind of like a feeling all process that's pretty that, much, yeah. Yeah. and that's why I told Jeff in the beginning it's like we're not getting together with any preconceived notions of we're gonna be this or that it was just like you know let's just get the five guys into a room well yeah. two several rooms, rooms. Yeah, a couple different rooms. Just some buddies playing music. And that's exactly yeah. what it was. And we, like, I knew Jeff. Um, I think you met my brother for the first time. Yeah. That night. The other guitar player, Mark, I had met him first that night, and the drummer, Tariq, met him first that night. So, yeah, it was just like, okay, introduce yourself, yeah. and let's go down to the basement. And The nice thing is, is, is uh, you know, as, as the singer, I'm blessed, and I, well, I, I'll give myself a full pat on the back, because I did recruit legit four pros, so they're going to have it all knocked back in no time flat here, and hopefully they make me sound good, so. <laughs> so aside from yourself, who are the other members of the band? 
Uh, well, Matt's on rhythm guitar. Um, again, I'm on vocals. Uh, youngest guy in the band, Mark Stako. He's playing lead guitar for us. Um, and the kid is just a ridiculous talent. Uh, we've got Tarek Ishida on drums. And then we've got Trevor Irvin on bass. And they're all spread out all over the countryside, like you were saying earlier. So we're trying to do this in a condensed <laughs> schedule. And but that's that's why you bring you bring skilled guys on with you, right? Absolutely. There's no chance I was gonna do it old school fifth and Vegas style and start from basic scratch. We're none of us even new. We're a guitar plug one in the end of a guitar, right? Yeah. You know, too just, much work and too little time. Oh yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Well. Yeah. Families and careers and everything. That's right, yeah. Sure. We're making it happen, though. So we talked a little bit about uh, Jeff's kind of uh, inspiration. So Matthew, I'm going to talk to you a little bit now. Um, so what's who's kind of been your been your inspirations for for music? Because you were saying you played in other bands before. Um, so if you wanted to kind of give us just a couple a couple of people you kind of look up to, or maybe some people that you kind of emulate when you're uh, when you're performing. Kind of a tough question in a way. I, I go through all different genres, like everything. Um, in high school, I played bass in the jazz band. Um, and, uh, I mean, it actually started with church is where I first picked up an instrument. It was the keyboard. Oh. And that lasted all of three months. He was sidestepping <laughs> the band camp course yeah, from there. That's yeah. what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's not cool there. <laughs> high school was rough. No, uh... Lee Tuba? Yeah. No, never, never went to any. <laughs> no, we, uh, yeah, no, I just, I started playing guitar after keyboard and lessons for three months, and then guitar was, that was it. I wasn't going back. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe three, four years after that, I kind of started playing around on drums, and then. 10, 12 years ago, I, it's not that I stopped playing guitar, but I'd rather build one or fix it than, uh, but, uh, yeah, drums has been my focus, and some vocals, background and stuff, been working on yeah. that. So you do kind of everything. A little bit, yeah. There's he does. Like mandolin. Multi-town. Yeah, yeah, we should see, our, we should see the drum room. And the you play the triangle? <clears throat> the yeah. cowbell. Funny enough, yeah, the triangle's about the only thing I don't have, but, yeah, no, I've uh, amassed a decent amount of gear over my lifetime so yeah it's fun it's always nice to have uh, tools but like i said I, I hardly play guitar anymore it was i had to force yeah. myself <laughs> as bad as that sounds it's just i you know you, you go through different phases of your life and yeah. it's been drums for the last yeah. 10 years so yeah so it's different definitely different and i like uh, but if it comes down to rebuilding a guitar or setting one up yeah i can sit down for 10 hours and do that so is that something you would eventually want to do you know if uh if kind of years go by and uh and and you wanted to to kind of pursue that would you do that kind of building your own guitars and uh funny enough actually uh when i was 18 i actually built guitars for a guy in cameras oh. yeah he ended up passing away unfortunately a couple years after but uh yeah i got my first whiff of what it was like to uh Build guitars, work with wood, and uh, I'm a plumber by trade. But uh, if I had my choice, so it wouldn't be. So, what made you fall in love with like? Um, what made you fall in love with uh, with building guitars? Was there one that did you just kind of do it one day and you said, you know, I really kind of like this process? Or is it is it a euphoric kind of? Uh, is it catharsis? Do you get like a a release from it? Kind of, you know, to say like, I I built that, I made that, I created that. Do you want uh, to Google what that word means first? <laughs> no, 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 I'm good. I'm good. Uh, yeah, you know, it was funny. It was I've always been a kid who takes stuff apart. And sometimes it, all the screws get back in there when you're done. Maybe. Yeah, no, it's, it was just one of those things. I always took stuff apart. So I was uh, I was a pretty young kid when I got my first really nice guitar. Worked all summer and paid for a Les Paul at 13 or 12. So wow. Yeah, that was, uh, it was used, it was a deal, but I was a little bit of a shasty kid, so I told the guy who owned it, if you ever sell it, come to me first. And three years later, he had kids and money troubles, and myself with a really nice guitar, so. Yeah, and just from there, boom, it was like, okay, I like messing with these things, and so I'd take them completely apart, set them up, learn how to do intonation, all those kinds of things, and yeah, from there, um, happened, a chance meeting with this guitar builder through a friend, and. I said, yeah, I'll come up and start building guitars. And 
I lived in the shop. Like I slept in a back room, and you know, electronic station was right outside that bedroom, and then the whole shop was in the back. It's actually really cool. Mm-hmm. So yeah, mm-hmm. super cool experience. Though, you know, you okay. know. Yeah, I know. it's just because I can't remember. <laughs> Yep. Somebody knows, drop a comment in the yeah, uh, exactly. comment section. Yeah, but yeah, I like that. How you can get uh, kind of so involved with kind of the other side of music, mm. and when you when you do everything already. I mean, would you consider ever like building drums or building kind of anything else or or putting you know it what? together? I, I would love to. I'd love to have a wood shop someday. But uh, I know from that experience, um, uh, the company is called Richard Guitars, and. Uh, he went on a limb, and uh, he couldn't quite get the funding that he really did need. So, he, you know, Jimmy rigged uh, a fair amount of his equipment, and he made it work. You know, we, we made some really nice guitars, but, uh, you know, to put a proper wood shop together to really do the job, um, you got to spend the money. You really do, you know, unless yeah. you're just that much of an artist that you can make something out of nothing. And there are people like that around. I just don't quite think I'm one of them. Yeah, they actually uh, met up on a job site. Like I said, I'm a plumber by trade, and uh, there's a really cool new theater going in on White Avenue area. It's called the Grindstone. Ah. And one of the carpenters actually uh, is a guitar builder, C.K. Carlton. When I talk about a proper wood shop, the, the, his instruments are built in a proper wood shop where you have the proper equipment, and they are absolutely amazing. Ten-string bass. The high five are kind of like a guitar, yeah. so you can strum it, you can play it. Phenomenal. So, yeah, a guy like that, I have yet to go see his shop, but promised him I would. I'm just sitting over here like a singer being useless. Hey, hey. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what you hold to me, like. like. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You said bassist wrong. Hey, yo. <laughs> Get into that again. Uh, so, I mean, I'll, I just want to stress. Um, for the suicide and depression benefit concert, uh, there's a hashtag that we're trying to trend right now. You are not alone. Um, it's such a tremendous cause, and it's I, I can tell you right now, Fifth and Vegas is playing for free. Um, a lot of volunteer hours are going into this on on all ends of the planning and all that good stuff. And I just want to give a quick shout out to Braden Sinclair Smith. The kid is, uh, he's all over it. He's running around like a maniac. He's making this happen right now. I do know that he's looking for, uh, for sponsorships from, uh, collaborating companies, private sponsorships. Um, he needs production covered with this big ticket. Uh, his whole vision with this concert is to basically try and, bring a Rogers Place type atmosphere to the Millet Agriplex. So minus the thirteen dollar drinks. Exactly. There's no uh there's no Rexall beers yeah. there and they definitely aren't thirteen fifty. Um <laughs> so, so I guess the next question for me quickly to interrupt is this an all ages event? This is an all ages event um with a licensed area. Again the production's just gonna be Intense is one of the. I mean, we got the privilege of getting full production because we're one of the headlining acts. But I mean, he's bringing in big LED screens for the side flares on the stage. He's bringing in was, the that. stage itself is it's just incredible. Yeah, and for an event like this, for uh, I mean, general admission is twenty five dollars, and I mean, uh, the act on right after us, Politic Live. These guys are are Juno nominated hip hop artists. Um, twenty five bucks. Oh yeah, Revolution, the Revolution Engine and, and and the supporting acts, Motor Hezbollah. I mean, these guys are awesome. It's it's for twenty five dollars. It's tremendous value. I know Braden's offering seventy five. Dollar VIP packages as well. Mm. That includes all your alcohol, um, backstage passes, meet and greet with all the artists. Um, you can find all that info on, on the event page at Let's Fight Suicide Depression. Suicide. Let's Fight Suicide and Depression Benefit Concert. So you can find everything on there. Twenty five dollars general admission, seventy five VIP. August eighteenth, and I think the doors open at four. That's what it says on the poster. There you go. Yeah, there you go. 
Jeff, Matthew, uh, thank you so much for joining us here today in the Longcast uh, Studios. Once again, if you want to contact them, you can get on their Facebook page, Fifth and Vegas, or you can get on the event page, uh, which is Let's Fight Suicide and Depression Benefit Concert, hashtag You Are Not Alone. Thanks for joining us and telling us a little bit about yourselves, giving us a glimpse into your world, and uh, giving us um, a couple of tickets to give away. Being Thanks, boys. Yeah, Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah, you know, there's your tickets. It's only 25 bucks. Well worth it. That's right. August 18th. Excellent. Have a great day. This week's episode is brought to you by the Watasco and Arts and Music Festival Committee, Delcon Visual Arts, and Warren's Music.